In this video, you're going to learn how to filter data objects in .NET Core. This gives you the ability to restrict what a user can see in the data sources dialog on the client and gives you an opportunity to enable role level security using the data sources dialog. The goal is that we go from a dialog that presents the user with every possible table, view, and stored procedure, which to the normal user that is not familiar with your data structure and your database, they don't really know what to do with this, to something that is curated and makes sense for the end user. So in this case, they don't know what all of these tables mean. They don't know how to join them. They don't know what the difference between a table view and a stored procedure is. So I've just created a curated data set for them of all invoices and all orders, which should be clear to whoever's trying to create the dashboard. And then in this example, we will apply some row level security through queries to these objects. So what we'll do is we'll first decide what to filter and then we'll apply those filters based on roles. And then ultimately we'll use those roles in queries to limit what a specific logged in user might be able to see based on maybe whatever permission scheme that you've set up. The example for what you're going to learn in this video is at jbarris uh, forward slash reveal object filter on GitHub. And then of course you can go to the help docs at revealbi.io and learn about user context provider and the IRV object filter. So with that, let's get started with the demo. I have a .NET Core server running, which is connected to an instance of my Azure SQL database. All I'm enabling here in this application is the authentication provider and the data sources provider, and I'm registering my Microsoft SQL server. You'll note that my object filter and my user context provider are commented out. So with my data source provider set up, I should be able to see the entire database in the client, all of the views, tables, stored procedures, et cetera. In my client application, I've added a few HTML selects, which include an order ID list, an employee ID list, and a customer ID list. My goal is that based on the order ID, employee ID, or customer ID, a specific role is set or certain tables are going to be visible through the data sources dialog for the user that is logged in. So you can look at this as impersonating a user login. You might have a token that you're sending to the server. You're parsing that and using it in the user context provider. For this example, we'll use something much simpler. If we scroll down, you'll notice that besides the set base URL function, I've added a new function on the reveal SDK settings called set additional headers provider. This is actually a callback to the URL that we've set in the set base URL, and it's going to return this headers array, which I'm going to define here in my JavaScript client. What am I going to pass in the headers? Well, I'm going to pass in whatever happens to be selected in my HTML selects that we've defined up here in our HTML file. So essentially, we are learning how to pass headers from the client to the server, which is the most common scenario you're going to run into. How do I know who's logged in to my application? How can I pass specific piece of information that identifies this user so I can do the correct type of query in reveal or show the correct tables, views, or stored procedures in the data sources dialog? So in this case, we'll just do a console.log. We're not executing anything with user context on the server, so we should just see the full database here that we're passing to the data sources callback. So I'll open this up in the default browser and we have our entry point for a new visualization. I'll just leave my defaults up here. Let's right click, go to inspect and we'll head over to console and we'll take a look at our console.log here. So if I do plus visualization, you'll see that these are the headers that are being sent to the server. So we've executed this code here and we did a console.log headers and now we are showing our data sources dialog so if i select my sql server data source 
you'll notice that I can see all of my tables, all of my views, and all of my stored procedures. So if I was just going to start creating dashboards, I can select a view, for example. Let's scroll down. Let's do the order analysis view. I'll select this data and we'll do order ID by date. I'll change this from a sum to a count of distinct rows. We'll update this and you can see here in 1996, I had 152, 408 and 270 for 1998. So I was able to view that specific view or table or stored procedure and I created a visualization off of it. Let's go ahead and discard this and now let's change what shows up in this dialog because what we wanna do is limit this based on the user who's logged into the system. So we're going to change this to BlomP or to Conch or to another user ID, and we'll look at the difference in behavior in the server. So let's close this out. Let's jump back to our server, and we'll first look at the user context provider. The user context provider is what is accepting the HTTP context from the client. I'm picking up the headers that I pass from the client. So in the client, if you recall, we sent X header order ID, X header customer ID, X header employee ID, and they were picking up whatever was selected from our selects. Well, how do I get those into the server? I'm just creating some variables here and I'm pulling those headers out. In this case, I'm creating a role called user and I'm creating a role called admin. If the incoming user ID is a root or blom P, the incoming user ID is being pulled in from X customer ID. I want that person to be an admin role. Otherwise, make them a user role. How am I going to use the user context throughout my application? I'm going to use a key value pairs and a dictionary object, order ID, employee ID, role. And I'm going to pass those to the RV user context. My user ID is a default property. So I'll have a user ID property, which will be whatever the customer ID happens to be. And then I'm going to pass in these properties as well. I could use these in custom queries, uh, the change data source item and the change data source item async. Well, we're going to use these in the object filter provider. So the IRV object filter interface has two functions. One is based on the dashboard data source and one is based on the data source item. So based on what you're trying to affect, you would use one or the other. In this case, I want to affect the data source items coming in from the callback on the client. You'll note that the user context is being passed in that we just created in the user context provider. So the first thing that I'm doing is making sure that we have values in both my user context and that my data source is a SQL Server data source item. If we pass those checks, we are going to get the role from the user context properties that we created in the user context provider. If this happens to be a user, which would have been everyone except a root and blonde P, then I only want them to see customers, orders, and order details. So I've hard-coded three objects that I'm allowing this user to see. I'm checking if there is a table or view named customers, orders, or order details, or a stored procedure named customer, orders, or order details. Table and view are the same thing. So if you say dot table, we're looking at a table or a view in your stored procedure. If it doesn't match this list, I'm not going to return the item in the data sources callback. If it does match the list, I will allow it to be returned. Or if the user is not of the role user, I will allow this to be returned. So let's go to our program.cs and I'll uncomment my user context provider and my object filter. So both of those classes that I added will execute in the reveal execution pipeline. We'll go ahead and run our server. Now we'll go back to our Visual Studio Code client. Let's right click, open this up in the browser again. I have Alfki. Let's hit plus visualization. We still see our full database. You'll notice I have customers, orders, and order details. Why? Because Alfki is not in the admin role. If we go back to our object filter, we're only going to see customers, orders, and order details 
if you're a user. When we look at our user context provider, you need to be a root or blonde P to see the rest of those items. So I'll close this out. We'll change this to a root. Click plus visualization, open up our data sources, and we can see all of the tables and views and stored procedures. So using the IRV object filter in conjunction with the user context provider, along with set additional headers provider on the client, you can customize what is visible for a specific data source in the reveal data sources dialog. Next, if you want to apply some row level security to your queries, you can change up what you have on the server. One of the biggest challenges with building out a BI tool is ensuring that your data is in a usable format for your end users. This means decent table names, field names that make sense, etc. So in this case, maybe customers orders and order details doesn't make sense for my users because they would have to do a join on the client through the data blending UI. So on my server, I have two views that encompass all of the customer's orders and order details. I have a view called all invoices and all orders. So again, in this case, if it's a user, I want them to see just these two views, which are curated complex join statements that I've defined in views in SQL Server that will return back just what's necessary for this user to see. But how can I apply just this user ID? So if I go over to the data source provider, when we set this up, we just set up a data source and on my change data source item async, I'm just returning the data source and I'm not doing anything else. However, I wanna change this to a richer query using again our user context and checking what the incoming table request is i'm telling reveal that i want to execute a custom query if the table is all orders or all invoices and the role is admin i want to do a select star from those tables if the role is not admin I will add a where clause where the customer ID equals the user context at user ID. The user context at user ID, of course, if we go to our user context provider, ends up being passed in X header customer ID. This is the user ID. And in our client application, this is what's being selected, of course, from our HTML select. So on our server side, we are going to execute a custom query based on an incoming request and we're gonna use the user context at user ID in this custom query in a where clause if you are the user role. So we'll go ahead and run this again and I'll open up my client. We'll view this in the browser. I'm gonna leave this as Alfki. We'll do plus visualization. I'll select my SQL Server data source. I can see my two tables. Now, if I just preview this data, of course, I should only see Alfki's data. So this is the Alfred's footer ski. Alf key as my customer ID. If I preview all orders, I'm doing the same row level security where clause and I only see Alf key. Now let's go ahead and change this to Blom P. Blom P is of course our admin. So Blom P will not only see all of the tables and views and store procedures, but they'll see the new ones that we added. If we preview this, they will see all of the customer ID. So this particular user is an admin role and it will always see every customer id let's say we just didn't want to have all this stuff everyone is only allowed to see all invoices and all orders let's close this out we'll minimize this we'll go back to our server i'll stop this we'll go to our object filter again and let's just comment out the role check here and here so we're just going to allow all invoices and all orders, no matter what. So let's rerun this again. We'll go back to our client. We'll right click, view this in the browser. Let's go to Blom P. Click plus visualization. With Blom P now, we should only see all invoices and all orders. However, because Blom P is an admin role, they're allowed to see all of the customer IDs. And if we change this now to anyone else like Conch, plus visualization, plus SQL Server data source, and we will only see the conch customer ID. 
So using a combination of the IRV object filter with the IRV user context provider, along with custom queries in the change data source item async, you can deliver a custom secure experience to your users with Reveal.